Good morning guys and happy Wednesday. I have a commission to make. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be working on today or for the next few weeks. I mean, yes, the horror novel is still going, but let me just kind of do a little rambling and maybe I can talk myself through what's going on here. So right now I'm at a good point in terms of like work balance. I've got that editor job at the Book Packager, which is my focus on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and that is going really well. And then Tuesdays and Wednesdays are devoted to other contracts, other clients, and my own books. Um, and today I've got a pretty busy afternoon. I've got a client call uh, with a new ghostwriting client. We just started the collaboration. So this is like our initial brainstorming kind of call. That's at 2.30 and then at four o'clock I have a call with a book coach client and they have like a team of, they have an agent already and other people and um, we're on submission right now and we're just having a check-in on how that's going, which is gonna be hopefully exciting. <laughs> and, um, but this morning and all the way up until, you know, that call at 2.30, I have Lisa's live stream and it's, the calendar is clear to work on what I wanna work on. And I don't know what I wanna work on <laughs> because I wanna keep developing the horror idea. But I was talking to an author friend of mine yesterday and she was asking how the progress was going because she knows I've done enough brainstorming on Kith that I could start outlining it right now. I mean, I've definitely started outlining books that were way further back in the brainstorming phase, but I've just been wanting to play in the brainstorming phase and I'm having that like, I've been having that talk with myself of like, am I doing this to procrastinate? Do I just need to jump in or what's going on? And then I realized what it is. This is what I think it is. Right now with the book packager, I am the lead editor on a project that is in the outlining stage. So that's what I'm doing Monday, Thursday, and Friday is working on the outline of this one book for this packager. And with my ghostwriting client, we are, we're in the brainstorming phase, but we're, it's a chapter book. It's a little bit shorter. So we, and she already came to me with like tons of ideas. It is well thought out. So the outlining is going to begin probably this week. Um, and that's, you know, I've talked about this before. I, I love having multiple projects at once, but I really like it when they're all in different stages because outlining is a specific kind of work. Drafting is a very specific kind of work. Revising is a very, you know, and I just, I like it when it's a mix because I feel like, okay, well, when I'm going to move from this project to this project, it's not just getting a break from this project. It's getting a break from outlining. And now I get to work on like copy edits or you know what I mean, whatever. So I think that's part of why I'm still playing around with the brainstorming of Kith because I don't want to start outlining it until I am not outlining two other projects. So, I don't know, maybe I'm just making excuses. I can't quite tell yet, <laughs> but I am gonna, I've decided just now in this moment that once Lisa's live stream starts for that first 20 minute sprint, I will do at least one piece of brainstorming on Kith that will hopefully move the move me closer to the outlining stage and I will definitely have a question for you guys to ask for help. I kind of think I know what I want to talk about today actually now that I'm now that I'm getting through this. Okay so Kith we're gonna work on but here's the other thing I and this is something I was talking to my friend about as well I'm really starting to think maybe it's been a couple weeks actually what day is it it is January 18th I finished that uh the last revision of my mystery book Sandstorm what was it? I mean, we're, we're like at least three weeks ago now. I've had a good break from it. And I have been finding that my mind has been like going back to it because it's like I said, I really know, I know what I need to do to make it better. And I was just so tired of it. But now that I've had a little break, maybe I want to get back into revising it. And I think I know what I want to do. Something I don't want to say I made the mistake. It was a choice, whatever. I don't regret it. But when I do my first like really big revision on a first draft, I love printing it out 
and really like getting my eyes off the screen and it's it's like this tactile thing I just I want post-it notes and colored pens and it helps me see the book in a different way and I skipped that step last time because I was I finished the draft right before going on that fall writing retreat with my friends and I wanted to work on the revision during the retreat which I did but I had to fly to New York and I did not want to carry the thick manuscript all of my pens and all that stuff in my carry-on luggage and so I decided okay I'm gonna skip the printing this time and I you know maybe I maybe I would have gotten more out of it if I had printed it out I don't know I'm, I'm still thinking that was the right choice because that retreat was only like three or four days so it's not like I would have gotten through the whole manuscript there I don't think it would have been quite worth lugging all of that with me. Anyway, all of that is to say, I think that's why that last pass didn't get everything done that I needed to get done because I I just, I feel like I'm more thorough, thorough when I get to do the on paper revision. So second sprint of Lisa's live stream today is gonna be printing out that manuscript and getting organized on how I'm going to tackle this revision and I will talk you guys through it step by step. So here we go. I did it. I made my decision. This is what we're working on today. Let's get to it. Hello, future bestsellers. Lovely to see you today. I'm Lisa Daly, and this is my fabulous co-host, Michelle Schusterman. So in just about 15 minutes, I did a character profile and I am actually pretty pleased with the amount of information I got on this guy. This character is, his name is Clarence. He is the older character I mentioned. He's 70 years old and he lives on farmland that he has lived on his entire life. And it is very close to the Kith family's house. And that is kind of his proximity to them, although he also has, as a having grown up as a young boy during the bus, Dust Bowl and during the Depression, he actually knows a lot more about the real boy at the center of the urban legend about the boy whose family members died one every Sunday of dust pneumonia. Um, he knows a lot more about this actual real boy because he grew up, he's only a few years older than him, than any of my other characters. If all of that sounded like hot nonsense, you might want to go back and watch my first two videos about this horror novel because I've already shared a little bit about this idea. So um, I I just went through and I worked through like his, his goal, which I had to talk myself like type through until I figured out what his goal is. His goal at the beginning, and of course it's gonna change, is that when all the blackouts start, and the other horror elements I have not disclosed yet begin to happen. He he doesn't 100% know what is happening, but he knows a great deal more than every, every other main character. And in the past, he has, it, like I'm talking about decades ago, he has seen other signs of things threatening the town, but his warnings to people were always dismissed. And now that he's older, he's like, I don't wanna be that you know, the crazy dude with the cardboard sign on the street corner. So he's just kind of like, screw the town. And he starts boarding up his his home on his farm and just like kind of going into, you know, bunker survival mode. Like I know what's coming or I know kind of what's coming. And, you know, nobody's going to believe me if I tell them. So, and, and the other characters are going to have to get to him and convince him to trust them and help them because they do believe all the stuff that he knows from the past if they're going to kind of defeat this evil that's spreading kind of vague but you know i'm trying trying to find that line of how much to share and what not to share six pov characters what kind of book is this oh this is the horror novel oh this is your you're doing six yeah <laughs> uh, no like Okay, first of, all, first of all, if anybody can pull this off, it's totally you. Well, thanks, because you know what? The mystery novel had, like, 11. <laughs> <laughs> no, not 11 POV characters, really? Well, okay, like... Or were you, like, solving the mystery, like, from... I'm dying to read this. Are you solving the mystery from, like, you're seeing all the different... Yes, you're POV seeing all the different... And, like, 
some of them literally had like one scene but but one of them has like probably 40% of the book. So I do still kind of have a primary protagonist. It's just, they're all in the same house together and they're all in e each other's scenes. So I don't think it's quite so crazy to go from but one's head to another. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. I love that idea. And, and I, I think for every role. Sorry, I think, ahead. no, and I just think for, for mysteries in general that it can be actually, it can almost make your life easier in other ways because you can plant red herrings because certain characters are going to know things that other characters aren't. Right. So just choosing which POV to be in for a specific reveal right. can help you withhold or share whatever you want with the reader, you know? Right. Well, and, and uh, you know, humans and witnesses, human witnesses, <laughs> are unreliable witnesses. Yes. As, right? And so sometimes, sure, we saw everything that happened, but maybe we, you know, we're filtering that through our own perception and you know when real cops interview um you know five different subjects they're they're gonna get different responses to mm -hmm. what happened okay we're on to the second sprint and i want to move over to the mystery novel but first i do want to continue mining your your mind <laughs> for ideas and inspiration here and i don't have anything specific about clarence or his situation that I want to pick your brains on just yet. Nothing that I can think of. So instead, I wanna ask you this, just, this is a very vague and general question, I'm sorry, but it should be fun to chat about. Um, I would love to know what, if, when you think of like one horror scene in a novel, in a movie, in a show, anything, one horror experience you had that stands out in your mind as being like, one of the most frightening things you've ever read or seen what do you think of and i'm gonna have to give that one some thought myself like a lot of things from what i saw in childhood is flashing through my mind and some of it wasn't even horror like i definitely remember that story in the witches about someone getting trapped in a painting really sat with me for a long time um, more, way more recently, I have, I don't know if you guys have heard about that horror movie, this super, super low budget horror movie called Skinamarink that is coming out and getting like a ton and ton of buzz now. But I watched the trailer, which in itself is a Halloween house of horrors. Like just, you could just aesthetically have that on in a dark room and it would be scarier than probably any haunted house I've ever been in. I don't know. It, it, I think some people are going to, are like, this is stupid and boring. I don't understand why people are freaking out, but I have watched a lot of reviews and read some reviews of it and like video reviews as well of people who saw it and what they say. And yes, I even read some spoilers about it because that's what I do with horror because I'm a chicken. And um, it looks incredible in a like, in a really fresh way that a lot of horror movies aren't. Like it's not relying on a jump scare and it's also not, just, I don't know, I don't know what to say about it, but if you've seen the trailer, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's different. And if anything else, it is very refreshing to see something come out of Hollywood and get in theaters that is just like truly unique and a filmmaker is trying something new. That's awesome. So tell me about the horror, you know, stories that have stood out most in your mind and what was it about that that scared you and, and really stuck with you? And with that said, we are going to move on to some mystery novel revision. Okay, that just turned into a big old mess. I had an issue with my printer that I still haven't figured out where it just keeps saying it has a memory problem. And I got everything printed, but it would only print in 25 page chunks. And this was a 336 page book, so it just took forever. And then I started filming at the end of the live stream and my battery died and I was like, you know what? It's time to walk Rosa and have some lunch and take a break. So now I am back and it is uh, almost 1.30 and I have that first client call at 2.30. So I've got about an hour left and here's the book. I always feel like 
kind of a, a good degree of guilt when I print a manuscript because I, it's like, it's a waste of paper, but it's fine. It's not a waste of paper. It's part of my work and I don't do it very often. Uh, sometimes I will print, I will like, depending on what I'm trying to do with the revision, I will shrink the font down. I will single space. I know, ugh, I don't do that very often. Uh, or I will end or I will do front and back um, on the pages so the manuscript is half the length. But I know how much work I need to do on this. I know I need the space to actually write out everything I want to write out as I'm revising. So I just went ahead and went for it and this is the full monster, you know, I the blank, the back of the pages are blank because that I use that to take notes and like write out sketches of scenes if I'm going to change or add things, which is going to be happening a lot, especially towards the end. Um, yeah. <laughs> so here it is. Here is the monster. Now let me, first of all, okay, something I thought of during the live stream that I wanted to share, because I get this question a lot, is how I manage working on multiple projects at once. And one thing I know I've said before a lot, in fact, I said it earlier today, is that I try my best to keep everything I'm working on at a different stage. There's the brainstorming stage, the outlining stage, the drafting stage, different levels of revising stages, copy editing stages, etc. And I like to keep it, I like to be at different stages in the process for however many, you know, hopefully no more than four, but ideally two or three projects that I'm working on at once. And there's something else too though, and that is just, and this is just a, like a little mind hack kind of a thing, but if I can be, have them in different places, as in one, maybe one's in Scrivener, one's in Microsoft Word, one I'm working on printed out, so I'm not looking at the screen at all, maybe my brainstorming is in a notebook by hand, just that too is, it feels like a break in the same way that if I take a break from project A, which I'm outlining, and I go to project B, which I'm drafting, I'm not just getting a break from project A, I'm getting a break from outlining. But if I'm, in addition, in addition to all of that, like let's say I'm outlining by hand, and I'm drafting typing, then I'm also getting a break from writing by hand, and I'm typing. And then when I go back, I'm getting a break from typing and I'm writing by hand. Does that make sense? So just, I, I feel like having this printed out and I'm actually gonna clear some space on my counter over here and spread this book out. And just for today, my only goal, cause this is all I have time to do before the client calls, is um, to, get, to get this book separated into its four parts and I'll explain that in a second. And kind of wrap my head around what I want to do with this revision. But I do think that just having this over there and knowing it's going to be completely off my laptop is like tomorrow when I'm working on my editing projects and I have a break, like my lunch break, I'm more motivated to just go over because it's like walk away from the computer and the desk, go over here and let's like see if we can just get through one chapter of revising, like read through one chapter and take your notes by hand. It feels like a mental break. So that is definitely one thing I try to do when I'm working on more than one project at once. The other thing I really love about printing books is printing your manuscript is that it's just to hold a physical copy of it like that is just it really kind of drives, drives home your accomplishment. Like, I wrote that. I wrote every single one of those pages. I wrote this behemoth and this book is one of, I mean, again, you guys know, I'm usually a middle grade writer. The books I write are usually a bit shorter than this. This thing clocked in at, I believe, 96,600 96, words, I think is where the, the last revision came in at. And that is actually part of a problem, which I will get to in a second. But first of all, I just spreading it all out like that and taking it in is like, okay, this is a, this is a good feeling of accomplishment. And also I like, I feel like it's almost, I was describing this on Lisa's live stream earlier. It's almost like this, this claustrophobic for me feeling for me being in a word document on one screen. Sometimes I just like to spread things out. It feel and feel like oh I can see the whole story now I know that's a little ridiculous and not exactly how it works but it's a mentality thing so anyway what I'm gonna do now is walk you through um, 
how why I've split this book up into four parts. So let's take a look at that. Yep, 96,600 words, eek. Uh, I will go ahead and share with you guys the actual real title of this book, which is This House Has Four Shadows. And shadows in this case essentially means ghosts. This isn't exactly a paranormal story, but we'll just go ahead and say, to keep it short, that in this case, shadows means dead people. So it's not really a spoiler because you're gonna, like, if you read the book within the first few chapters, you would understand this definition of shadows. It means four people are gonna die in this house during the course of this book. So the way I have the book set up is part one, which is the first shadow, and it ends with the discovery of the first body. Part two is the second shadow, you guessed it, ends with the discovery of a second body. And then of course we have the third shadow, and then the fourth shadow will be the final victim in the book who dies at the end. So all I'm gonna do for today, just to get things started, is I'm gonna use my post-it notes to kind of mark those, those places um, so that when I stack the manuscript all back together, it's easy for me to find part one, part two, part three, part four. And I will be using other color post-its to mark other key scenes in the book. Right now, just kind of thinking off the top of my head, I think I'm going to be using certain colors for certain characters so it's easy for me to identify, oh, I need to find this particular character's point of view right before this character dies, that kind of thing. And I'll just have those tabs uh, sticking out at the top. And then with, I'll probably do the same thing, like just come up with a color coding system of how I'm gonna use my pens and what certain colors are going to be used for. I don't get too into this, like I have, a full rainbow of colored pens. I don't really need all of them, but it does do having some kind of color coding does help you once you really get into it kind of at a glance when you're looking for something. If you know the red pen is where I'm cutting stuff, you know, it just, it, I don't know, it helps. It feels more organized and it looks cool. So whatever, that's what I'm doing. I will probably share more details about this later as I actually get into it. But right now I'm just kind of keeping an eye on the clock because I, you know, I do have some, some client stuff coming up. The other thing I want to say is, so I mentioned the word count is a problem. There's nothing wrong with a 96,000 word book, obviously. Um, however, I'm, my thinking, and you know, I'd love to hear you guys thoughts on this. My thinking right now is, so this is like, this is a mystery novel. I would, I would say kind of aspirationally that it's like a book club mystery. That's kind of how I would, if we were going to go into a subgenre, that's how I would define it. And if it is going to be published, it would be my adult fiction debut. It would be considered a debut novel. And between that, the genre and the fact that I'm a debut, I really feel like it would be in my best interest to keep this to 90,000 words max. And that's based on a lot of my own observations as well as conversations with some people I know in publishing. Um, a friend, a good friend of mine who is also getting into adult fiction and she already has an agent for this and is on this in the submission process, she's hearing from her agent that even in um, other adult genres, it's editors aren't it they're a little more hesitant to if it's a debut author to have a like a hundred thousand plus word novel don't despair especially if you're writing fan sci-fi fantasy i'm not saying you have to write under a hundred thousand words um those genres it is still pretty normal to go over but i feel like personally this story despite all the povs i have it takes place in a house over the course of 24 hours. It should feel tight. It should, it is tightly plotted. And while I'm nervous because I know a lot of the things I need to add to the end are, I guarantee you, going to c carry it over the 100,000 word mark, I also know that I allowed myself while I was drafting to get very self-indulgent very kind of navel gazy and experiment a little bit and there's just a lot of character rambling like inner monologue just yeah self-indulgent stuff that i got out of my head out of my system to help me get to know the characters and to help me find the voice and now i really need to go through and be ruthless and cut because this story absolutely can be and should be told in no more than 90,000 words. So that's gonna be the challenge because I, there is a lot I need to add. 
but there's also a lot I need to cut. And so that's where we are with that right now. And I am just going to call this vlog there. I would love to hear all your thoughts below, especially about horror. What scares you? What is like, what's the, you know, the, your most traumatic <laughs> horror movie or horror novel story that you've got? Like what just did it for you? And uh, yeah, that's it. I will see you guys next week with another video. Bye.